trace this back to colonialism. But are you then implying that the revolution was not able to deal effectively with the matter of uh, corruption? Uh, of course, uh, I, I cannot say it has failed because it's continuing. You do know that we continue to talk about the National Democratic Revolution, the NDR, which means, therefore, we're conscious of the fact that uh, the goal has not yet been attained. And I maintain, therefore, that uh, as long as we scatter around the, the source of wealth, that is land, we're going to continue to have this problem. A couple of weeks ago, I was watching uh, the Chinese Premier, Wen Jiabao, and he was talking about the state of Chinese economy and so on. And one of the things that he made very clear was that the threat to Chinese growth, one, is inflation, but two, is corruption. Uh, what one does with the ANC is as direct in dealing with this problem as the Chinese are. And I'm saying this on the back of one of the big stories over the past couple of weeks, the closure of the arms deal investigation, where the ANC should have shown courage, where the ANC should have shown desire to deal once and for all with the issue of corruption in this country. What are you saying to them? And I think uh, it's not that they've been direct or we have not been direct. The critical question for me is that, what have we done and what are we doing about corruption? The question of the arms deal is not as easy as you pose the question, it's very complex. It is informed by an array of, of, of factors. First and foremost, you will, you will, you will understand that uh, there was full-blown investigation into the arms deal, of which there was a conclusion that was made by the, the tripartite that um, there is no corruption uh, in the awarding of, of the arms deal and all of that and that um, if there is corruption, it could be in the primary, uh, primary contracts uh, uh, and so on. And subsequent to that, people like Shabir Sheikh were basically arrested and actually convicted. Others are saying, well, um, Parliament, which is the representative of the people in, in the form of scope, has said that please do not close this investigation. There are certain legs of this investigation that still need to be followed up. But a week later, uh, the Hawks decide on their own to close, to close this investigation. And the, the, the issue is not so much about this, but it is much about who may have been involved and whether or not they've been protected. And when you protect certain individuals in society, then are you, are you, are you saying that we'll deal with the DGs through the investigative units and the investigative um, tasks that are there, but when it comes to politicians, we'll protect each other? No, there is nothing like that. In fact, the countries that are involved in this particular instance globally have actually agreed that uh, there is no longer investigation on the question of the arms deal. You get to a point where, when there is a global agreement on this particular question, uh, where will it actually end? You spoke about Kosatu Zolinza Mavavi, and here's a quote uh, after the NGC in Durban. He said, if, there, if there's a criticism of the ANC Council, it would be its failure to articulate a clear and systematic program to lead society in a battle against corruption in the private sector, public sector, and within our organizations. He seems to imply that the ANC in Durban at the NGC did not come up with a clear strategy uh, that deals with these matters. Well, the ANC does not take a populist view in the fight against corruption. It takes a view that says that like we have discussed, and I've quoted the general counsel, that these are the things that we've got to do in the fight against corruption. You know, <clears throat> corruption is not defined by looking at the cover of an individual, lifestyle audit. It's about um, what we actually do uh, on a daily basis. You see, there is a question that is called political influence, using your position to promote corruption. And that is called by Melan Guardian political capital. Right? And that is what has given a definition to black economic empowerment. And uh, that has sort of narrowed the conception of black economic empowerment to something of cronies. And, and, and the ANC have warned against this. And that is why it is important that the combination of discipline within the party and making members to understand that it's counter-revolutionary to promote corruption, but on the other hand, you need to strengthen the arm of the state and its ability to deal with corruption in whatever manner that it manifests itself.